Now let's look at what happens to the growth path in the Romer model. Remember the growth path is we're looking at y, how y sub t is changing over time. How is this going to change this balanced growth path in the Romer model when our savings rate increases? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So when s increases, this is our savings rate. So the rate of savings increases, let's say, at time period t equals 0. So uh, we'll put that here, time period t equals 0. As usual, what I'll do is have a little dotted line just to kind of show that this is where the change is going to happen. Again, we want to put down some stuff uh, to really help you uh, be solid with this model. We know that my growth path of y, which is what we're looking, my growth rate of y, excuse me, that we're looking for here is 1 over 1 minus beta. Uh, times the growth rate of A, plus we have beta times the growth rate of K. If we're in steady state, meaning that we don't have any more convergence of our capital uh, to labor ratio, we're going to have this just as 1 over 1 minus beta times the growth rate of A, because this is going to equal 0 in right our steady state. Also, we know that the growth rate of A is going to be uh, chi alpha n bar. And what this means, just as a review, this means that my growth rate of technology is going to depend positively on how productive workers are that engage with research and development, the percentage of workers that engage in research and development, and also the overall total population. So we can start saying before this change, we were at steady state, so we had this uh, constant level uh, let's say this is 1 over 1 minus beta times the growth rate of A. If there was no change, we would just continue on this balanced growth path uh, forever. But we do see a change. We see the change in savings rate. We see this change in savings rate. Well, what do we actually know? We know that the change in savings rate will not impact the growth rate of A. So it's not going to impact the growth rate of A, but will it change that growth rate of K? Meaning, is there some convergence that's happening? Well, remember from the solo model, if we see this increase in S, in this increase of savings, what do we know? In that solo model, we see when savings rate increases, K star increases. Our overall, because right, what's happening? We're saving. We're able to save more, meaning we're able to we're able to put more money into investment. We're able to grow our capital stock per labor. And so we know that this part up here. We know my growth rate of capital is going to stay the same, even though my growth rate of A is going to stay the same. But exactly how are we going to show that? Well, first thing is, we know that later on, at some point, we are going to have the exact same slope. We're going to have the exact same 1 over 1 minus beta times G sub A. This is going to be where our growth path ends. However, what's going to happen in between is we know that when savings goes up, I start having more and more capital. But how does that capital? It starts to increase and it increases at a decreasing rate. And so if capital is increasing, and then we see that when capital increases at a decreasing rate, then my output's going to increase at a decreasing rate. So we're just going to see this go up, but then it's going to get to this long run growth path, which is the exact same slope. So this is the same slope as before. So the savings rate will allow us to grow, but eventually that growth rate is still going to be the same as it was before.